really excited to introduce you all to Katie McBratney from Own Trail. She's going to help us unpack that a little bit with the journey map. So your bird in hand, who I am, who am I, what do I know, and who do I know? The answers to that is how you get to your unfair advantage. With Katie's help, creating our trails on Own Trail. I absolutely love this. It's really super fun and it's gonna allow you to go through and figure out through your own story, what is your unfair advantage? It's like the Zoolander. Who am I? Katie's gonna take us through that. Wow, what an incredible way to kick off a session and incredible next. I'm just grateful to follow the chief inspirer who does her job so incredibly well because I didn't realize how much I needed those words and to think about my bird in their hand. I am the co-founder and chief community officer of Own Trail. You'll get to know a lot more about me over the next half hour or so. But just a context set. The trail is, I love that you said it's the most helpful place on the internet. What we are is a place where you can be your whole self, where you can use tools and find community to achieve your next authentically, right? And what we're going to use today is a journey mapping tool using our trail creator to think about your story in a whole new way, but with the intention of not just getting a journey map, but with the intention of setting a mindset shift that you'll take with you across the rest of this journey. So this is very much planting a seed that you will take with you as you think about the next however many weeks. And knowing that this trail that you will be creating together is something that you can and absolutely should return to as your journey continues to unfold. So just letting it be known now that this isn't going to be a one and done. Yes, you will complete your first assignment, but it's just an assignment that you can come back to, not just during this program, but at any time. Mentioned. We do have a paid membership, which y'all get a nice juicy promo code for. But what we'll be doing today is using all of the free experience of Own Trail. So why are we even doing this? Liana really set this up perfectly, right? As you think about your bird in the hand, let's flip it back to the narratives that we see and hear in the business media, but also in mainstream media. It's not just limited to business outlets or business press. Because every founder has a story and we know a lot of them. For example, Whitney Wolf heard of, um, oh, enter full screen. Every founder has a story. And we're going to talk through some that you probably know. And if you haven't actually heard, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So Whitney Wolf heard, founder of Bumble, unicorn status. The most commonly known narrative about her origin story as an entrepreneur is that she was an early executive at Tinder, experienced harassment, left, and built her own company that achieved unicorn status and a cult following. So then we've got the founder of Calendly, which I'm sure many folks here use. And his story is that he leveraged his 200K savings. Essentially, he bet his life savings on building this prototype. And now his company is valued at billions of dollars and used worldwide. And then perhaps one of my favorite and one of the most famous is Sarah Blakely of Spain, who was a fax salesperson. She sold fax machines while she was starting to get Spain out into the world. Now it's the 2000s. She was selling fax machines. Like we're not talking about back in 1986. That is a different grind and a wholly different product than Spain. And we know these stories and they're interesting and they're easy for me to recite. I don't know any of these people. I've never sat in a room and heard them tell their story, but I know these narratives because they're hero journeys. And those are nice and they're easy and we're programmed as humans to be attracted to and learn hero journeys. There's an idea or an opportunity, a quest, but then there's a setback. But yet, the hero overcomes it and reaches this iconic status. And the thing is, we all have our hero journeys, and you are on your own right now. But the thing about Sarah, Whitney, and Tope that, that we don't realize when we hear their truncated version 
is that these are great stories and we might not see ours as the same, but they had to actually do it first. They had to go on the story to have this nice anecdote to share and get repeated and to be brought up in the entrepreneur world and in the business world. But they had to do the thing. They lived it. And the story came from that versus creating a story and trying to get your life to lead up to it or to live up to it. And that's very much in line with the bird in the hand, right? Like the story is already unfolding. You're living it. So let's spend some time digging into what it is. Because as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, your story is an asset. Now, I'm the first person to talk about how we should not commoditize ourselves. And also, your story is valuable in your business. Everything from articulating your value, hiring the right talent, getting prep, building community, tapping the expertise that you've learned and honed along the way. And of course, practical things like pitches, fundraising, et cetera. Your story is something that you can harness to fuel pieces of your business. And you're already doing it. We would not be in this virtual room. But it's also an asset when it's authentic. Think back to those three examples. They seem relatable. Somebody not having endless resources of wealthy family members to tap, but instead said, I believe in this so hard, I'm going to fund it myself. This is what we're going to do. You don't need to have the same bank account that he leveraged to do that saving, to tap that saving. But that idea of believing in it that hard is so relatable. Experiencing discrimination and deciding, I'm not going to settle for this. I'm going to go do what I know I can do and do it better. That's huge. And equally as authentic. Sarah Blakely not hiding the fact, not downplaying it, that yeah, she sold fax machines and it got her from there to here. So the authenticity is going to be extremely key. However, most places we get to tell our career story, our professional story, or even our personal story, don't quite do it justice. So this might seem like what we see the entrepreneurial journey as, right? You go to some prestigious university, you get this big name job, you climb the ranks from that position of success, you decide to start a company, raise a ton of money, and then you're worth billions of dollars. And that's not true for almost anyone. And I would be hard pressed to find a person that this is exactly how their journey looks. This is the pared down, cleaned up narrative. And it's always going up and to the right. That's what the business world wants us to do. But the reality, and I know my reality, and I'm betting your all's reality, is that it looks a lot more like one of these. It's winding. It contains our personal and professional experiences. It contains where we've been in the past, where we are and what we're doing now, and also what we might do in the future. So what we're going to do is dig into that a little bit. But first, I'm going to share mine because it's not about the right path here. This is an important thing to remember, much like the burn in hand, those go together perfectly, is this isn't about the right path. That's a distraction. That myth that there's a right way to make your business successful and only one right way to do it is a distraction from you figuring out your right way. And now we're going to dig in to yours. I'll share mine as an example. So much like Liana, I am an accidental entrepreneur. And this is my journey. And here are just a few of the milestones that I've shared on it. For example, there was a series of promotions that happened. That's on my LinkedIn. You can see it. But what you don't see is the job and just burnout after. Then there's the sudden layoff that happened while I was several years into my early stage startup journey. That was a forcing function for me to say, I'm no longer going to work like I own the company for a company that doesn't align with my values. It was a huge fork in the road that I never would have experienced without this negative, at the time, experience. And then there's the whole experience of finding my people who got 
what I cared about, what made me special, people who cared about the same thing, the same kind of people that I'm guessing were the ones that you're going to message for this assignment, the ones who you can ask, what makes me great at my job? Finding those was absolutely pivotal and necessary before I became on, an entrepreneur, which of course, building own trail, that's a huge part of my journey that when I graduated from the university with a journalism degree, tech founder was not even a thing I considered for myself because I didn't know it existed. <laughs> but what about what I'm doing next? I'm considering writing a book. Do I have an outline? Do I have a proposal? Do I have a synopsis? Absolutely not. But I can give myself space to name it here and say, this is one of my possible futures without having it be another thing I have to do. And that's exactly the path that led me to co-found Ontel, right? My non-linear journey, both professionally and personally, is what led me to be exactly the right co-founder for a platform Say it's under so you can use it for the uh, four year old yeah, Kids. Oh, yeah. All right, and we're back. Okay, so this is what a real life entrepreneur looks like, right? It's the winding path. It's the personal and the professional coming together. And it's what makes me the right person to be co-founding this platform, all about nonlinear paths, personal and professional together, and not having to pretend that we're perfect. So this is what we're going to do now, is you're going to work on building your trail. And what you'll do is go to ontrail.com and start to create an account. All you need is an email and password, and you can choose a screen name. You can make it match your social handles. You can make it your name. You can make it anonymous. Because we're going to dig a little bit deeper than what's on your LinkedIn today. We're going to go deeper than what's on your CV. And like I said, we're going to plant seeds that you're going to water over the course of the next weeks to come and potentially longer. I'll weave it some admin logistical things as we go. But also something important to note is this is very much a safe space. And I want to give Liana and Fiona so much credit for building this space where we can be authentic. And I want to remind everybody that like you have full agency. So as you're working on mapping your journey using the trail creator, you'll have opportunities to share. Before we start to that, I'll just put out there that if anybody is a recovering space filler, silence filler, like I am, it's going to be a challenge for you today because there might be a couple places where we pause and that silence gets a little awkward, but I promise you stick with it because on the other side of that discomfort is usually something really meaningful. And it also gives folks who aren't usually the first voice to speak up a little bit more opportunity to decide to take the point. All right. So admin stuff, you have this robust profile you can build out. It helps people learn more about you, but also filter and explore and find people who share experiences or identities. You can fill this all out later as much as you want. Everything is optional. But one thing you should do is be sure to select inspiration space from the affiliations down here. Because what that'll do is allow you to not just proudly claim your membership in this community, but to see the trails of other folks that are a part of this incredible community that Liana has built and enrich your connection with them. I bet you'll see something on a trail of someone's today. I know this happens with me and Liana where I'm like, I didn't know that about you. Or you're working on that now, tell me more so I can support you. Cool. And the last very admin thing is you can make any milestone private. And that means that it's not going to be available to the general internet to see, only to people that you do a double opt-in connection request. So if there's something that you're like, this is important for me to put into words to claim, but I don't want it coming up in my Google search results, just click that little privacy button and it's tucked away. And another thing, because we're used to this neat, clean, orderly, perfect line, do not worry about the timing. You do not have to account 
for every year, every job. And you don't have to go into perfect order. So you can go back, edit, add, and rearrange at any time. Okay. So own trail is made up in this trail creator that experience that you're in now, you've got kind of automatically put into it. We're going to add milestones and they can all be past, present, or aspirational. And then there are some general kind of categories to guide it, but it is choose your own adventure. So if this was an obstacle, but it had to do with family, great. You can sort it however you want. There's no right answer. Just go with what feels right. But this is my favorite one to start off, which is what's an experience that formed who you are today? Something that shaped you into the person you are sitting here on this Zoom right now. It can be something that you could get a greeting card for, but it might be something that nobody knows unless they know the right question to ask. Go ahead and add that as a milestone to your trail to kick, kick, kick this off. Again, not the first thing that ever happened that was meaningful in your life. Something that contributed to who you are right now. And if you're feeling so inclined to share, I believe everyone has the ability to either raise their hand or unmute themselves. So please go ahead. When I did my trail, I started with moving to the UK. And that is because it felt like this sliding doors moment, literally like the film. There were these two different tracks that I thought I was going to have in my life. And one was stay in London and one was go back to the U.S. And I stayed. And so that was the first point was moving and being here. And I think, yeah, it's like a total trajectory shifter. Yes, that's such a good example. And part of me is, ooh, what would that alternate version of your life be? I'm always fascinated, right, by the paths we don't take. For me, an answer for this one is actually the first milestone on my trail. And that's my depression diagnosis decades ago. And while fortunately, that's not something I'm actively managing every day, it absolutely shaped who I am as a friend, as an advocate to destigmatize so many things, including mental health, but also as a leader. I'm more empathetic. I feel like actually creating space for the whole person at work instead of trying to be everything to everyone. And I think I have a lot more grace towards myself because of that. And I honestly don't know who I would be, but that affects my personal and my professional life. So for the next key milestone to add on this beginning of mapping your journey, what was a pivotal moment that made you the person to be building exactly the business you're building right now? And this might be the aha moment where you were like, I got it. Why has nobody done this? It's so obvious to me. It might be that clear moment where that light bulb went off, but it might also be an experience, a relationship, something that you learned about or dealt with in your life that you were like, somebody's got to solve this. You might not have known it at the time that it would be you. So what was one of those moments? I definitely thought of something as well. It's maybe going back a few years now, but a pivotal moment for me, I think, was actually I tried hypnotherapy for the first time. And I thought that was just absolutely amazing for me. Just because it helped me build some confidence, helped me realize that there was a couple of toxic people in my life and hypnotherapy helped me realize that I don't have to tolerate these people. And that seems like such an obvious thing, but it wasn't obvious to me. And like everything improved from that. It was absolutely pivotal. That was maybe about six, seven years ago, but I think it was ab still absolutely a keystone thing that helped improve my life. Thank you. You would maybe not as you're digging into this, but we love a therapy milestone on Own Trail. You are in good company. It is talked about quite a bit, right? Therapy, mental health, these kind of internal moments where you're like, so first of all, thank you for sharing that. And if we put our business hat on, if it's ever up, that shows adaptability. It shows learning. It shows self-reflection. It shows choice, proactiveness. There's so many qualities that pivotal experience encapsulates that I'm sure serve you today, plus also all the direct outcomes of that experience, which people are like, yes, I was 
I healed. I learned how to hand to- handle toxic relationships differently. Yes, and there are layers to each of these. And as we're going, really, the intention with this exercise is to get you to unpeel some of the layers that were so quick to move past. Just because our world is all about the next. What's the next thing? Okay, you did that. What's next? What's next? What's next? But there's value in spending some time with yourself in your journey and saying, damn, I did that. And that was hard. I can do hard things. Or that was powerful. And I can make those choices. If anybody else wants to share. Now, this one is fun. Because we're so used to talking about our skills and our experiences in a professional setting. Using CV or LinkedIn interviews, those are all selling tools. We're trying to sell our experiences and our skills in the exchange for a job and a paycheck, right? It's transactional in nature, even if it's humanized a bit. Yet, Liana's mentioned this two minutes into the intro for this session. Because there's a lot about who we are that make us great at what we're doing, that make us great as business people. These skills and this creativity, the experiences that we've had that are separate from the work world or maybe not a measurable smart goal that make us incredible at our job. So what's something that makes you incredible as an entrepreneur that people would not know just by looking at your CV? You can follow up with these with each other, with yourself, and there's power in actually writing it down, right? Capturing in that milestone, seeing it in words, putting words to it is actually making neuro connections, right? You're connecting neurons in your brain around this experience. So scientifically, but also emotion and feeling wise, this is powerful, even if it feels like just a few keystrokes. That's it. It's something that uh, I guess, I was not to miss TV, but it doesn't really come up as a skill that's required very often. <laughs> I was a, a life model in art school for like years ago. <laughs> it was more about perspective. Like if I'm courageous enough to be completely stark naked in front of dozens of strangers, then in a presentation for two minutes doesn't seem to be that difficult. So yeah, I recommend to be in a life model. If anyone wants to just dive into some courageous thing. And reminding us, we're all just people. We're all people Mm -hmm. with our own meat sacks going on. Okay, so the last one that I want you to add today, again, you can work on this at your own time. I actually encourage you to, to kind of water these seeds that were planted. I'm sure you've thought about what the next steps and what what a dream for your business are. What might your life look like in five years? And think about both the work side, the business side, but also your lifestyle. What is it that you aspire to? And add those as aspirational milestones, at least one. Because again, we're so used to setting goals. I will, we will have a million pounds in sales, whatever. I will have a team of 16. Like we're so used to measurable goals and that's awesome. Goals are great. I love a good goal, but there's also power in giving us, giving ourselves the permission to just dream really big without the obligation that we have to already have a plan in place. Because especially if we're thinking five years out, you may change your mind and that's okay. You can say, I could say, I want to write a book and a year from now be like, I'm not interested in that anymore. That's not failing to meet a goal. That's life unfolding. And it's a different exercise in creative entrepreneurship. Think about how your life might look or feel instead of just the measurable business plan achievements and thinking about them connected or separate. And if anybody was like, oh, I thought about this one. That's why I'm on this journey. Now is your time to shine because we want to hear what you're calling in for your future. You can also use the chat. This is an important one when you're thinking about your unfair advantage, because it will also allow you to determine where to focus. 
analogy that I often use is if Coca-Cola knows that they're about to discontinue a, a soda flavor, they're not going to put the same resource behind that one as maybe something new they're going to bring to market or what already exists. And when you are building for your future, focuses everything, if only because it allows you to see the space for joy and inspiration and everything that's the exact opposite of hustle culture. So allow yourself to think, what is it that I want for myself, the business in five years? And even more importantly, how do you want to use your business to be the vehicle to take you into the next five years? Because even when you're an entrepreneur, you know, what your job looks like can change. It can be fluid. You can quit. You can start a new one. It's not predetermined just because it's yours, but it is a stepping stone and it is a vehicle and it is so powerful because it allows you to create profit through purpose and choice. Yeah. Emphatic underline of all of that. And it is something that in our hustle culture world and Leon and I so many conversation about this. That's why with Ontra, we named them aspirations instead of goals, because it's not about the grind, it's about the life. And in thinking about this one, I like to challenge myself to say, what's a dream or an aspiration that's almost too big to say out loud? Because you want to push to that point of almost discomfort. If it feels a little bit unreasonable, but still doable, that's it. And that helps you channel that focus, your resources, even if it's not something you're thinking of every day. Maybe it's something you write on a post-it and sits above your desk. Maybe it's your happy place that you imagine to after a hard day. But our brain recycles stories and it gives power to the ideas that we give it time for. Yes, there are these opportunities to create help beacons on own trail. And that what that does is it's like a bat signal. And it'll call in the own trail community to help you with what you might need. And help can be on anything. And there's a recipe. I need X from Y in order to do Z. Because if you say, I need help building my business, that can mean anything from bookkeeping to building a website, to coming up with a business model, to getting social media followers, to, to, to. So this formula will help you break through a little bit of the difficulty of asking for help. Break through that stigma. It's easy. It's quick. Go ask. People are ready. But it also gives you a degree of specificity for people to be able to help you. And then finally, to get your own little doodle, and I saw a couple of you have, you get your little trail squiggle. You hit publish, and that just means it's discoverable on own trail. And when you do that, I want you to look at your trail and say, does it answer why you, why this, and why now? And if it doesn't yet, that's okay. It's a journey. But continue to work on mapping the journey until it's clear to you what it is. Because once you have clarity on what your bird in the hand is, on what your unfair advantage is, you can tell that story in 8,000 different ways. But first, you got to get real with you about it and know it, not just hear it or see it from someone else. The messages you're going to get in response to Leona's assignment today are going to be amazing, but they're only going to be as powerful as much as you believe in them and see them as truth and not opinion. So together, those two exercises, like you're going to get a dose of confidence, but also clarity because this is the foundation of all of the next module. Love that. And I have to say, y'all, literally, Own Trail is the most helpful place on the internet. I used the help begins when I did my TEDx and I was like, I'm looking for people, if you if this resonates with you, to share, to share the video. And within 24 hours, I started getting these like pings on LinkedIn and five people like legitimately watched it wrote thoughtful comments and shared it on their LinkedIn. It's such a great place to be. And it's a, a wonderful compliment to what we do here at Inspiration Space. So thank you so much, Katie, for sharing thank you, thank with us you. and taking us through that. I do want to encourage you all to take some time 
to complete your trail and to really think about why you're awesome.